Boston Bruins defeat the Detroit Red Wings 5-1 to one here at TD Garden on Thursday night. I'm Connor Ryan of BostonSportsJournal.com, here to give you just a couple of takeaways from what was a, a pretty busy night here at TD Garden. Obviously, uh, when you look at this game, the Bruins' fourth one in a row, a lot of it starts uh, and ends with Brad Marchand uh, and his return uh, close to five weeks ahead of schedule from double hip surgery. Um, but in a move that I think doesn't really surprise any of us, which I think is probably a testament to just Marchand and how good he is, how he's able to fight through adversity, um, to have a situation where he comes back at this accelerated recovery timeline, goes out there, scores two goals, both on the power play, uh, sets up a goal for Charlie Coyle. Um, just looks like he didn't miss a step, right? When you look at a guy that I think this is a situation where even when we are map- mapping out his timeline, and we, we talked about this on, I think, both Poke the Bear and Bruins Beat that we wouldn't have been surprised if Martian came back in mid-November, maybe even early November, you know, fighting through that earlier projected timeline. But still, even if he came back, it's good to kind of temper expectations for a guy who is 34 years old coming off that type of procedure on both of his hips. Like, I think we were all mapping out he was going to be, you know, a Martian and 80% of his previous capability or something like that, which still is a very, very good player, no doubt. But um, I think we started here, looked like the same old Martian we've seen in the past, right? I mean, it's not only the fact that uh, his impact on special teams, he almost had two minutes of shorthanded time on ice, had the two goals on the power play, as I said, um, his overall details were great. Um, you know, that the coil goal was a byproduct of him and Jake DeBrus really winning board battles down low. Um, seems like, you know, his ability to move him around the ice, he's still shifty, he still looked like the same margin we've seen in the past. Now we'll see how he feels on Friday. Uh, he won't play on Friday, obviously against the blue jackets. They're keeping him out of back-to-back games, uh, to start at least, but, um, so far, so good. And when you look at just what Br- Brad Martian gives you, not only at even strength, but at special teams, the emotional lift, his ability to kind of swing momentum back in your team's favor with a, a hit or getting under the skin of the opponent, just he does it all, right? So you can't really understate um, what his impact is for this team that is already rolling, right? It's now 7-1-0, and has won four, game, four games in a row. So nothing but good reports there. Um other good news, Jeremy Swayman, uh, really good bounce back game for him. Uh, you know, his first game since I think last Tuesday against Ottawa, where he gets pulled after two periods, give up, giving up six goals. Um, as good as Lee Solmark has been, and he has been fantastic, right? Five and five and oh, with a nine, three, six, eight percentage. If you're the Bruins, you need both those guys playing at a high level, right? Because you can't just ride Olmark for five, six games in a row. You need both those guys playing at a high level, complimenting each other, giving each other a bit of a rest at times. Um, and you saw that tonight. I think as much as the game was lopsided at the end, right? Five to one. It's kind of closed for the first two periods. And even in the first, I think Ottawa, had, uh, not Ottawa, Detroit had eight high danger scoring chances uh, during five and five play. And so and build them out. I think, you know, Zaboral had that one brutal turnover where uh, Detroit almost scored and Swimming turned it aside. So, you know, for Swimming, just a good step in the right direction, right? You already have Olmark playing well, but as much as Olmark keeps you afloat when Swimming was trying to find his game, the Bruins would much rather have both those guys playing at a high level. And hopefully a win like this for Swimming, you know, sets him on that course and starts giving him a little bit of a run of his own. Um, the bad news from tonight's game, uh, amid all the good stuff with Marshy and Swayman, Craig Smith gets on the board, which is good. Um, the the one bad news, obviously, David Krejci exits the game in the second period, takes that hit from Rasmussen up high. Don't really know what exactly it was. Um, I believe Matt Porter of the Boston Globe saw Krejci leave, didn't have anything wrapped up. So we'll see what exactly it is. Um, Jim Montgomery already said uh, Krejci's not traveling to Columbus, so you can rule him out for Friday's game. Uh, for now, it looks like Pavel Zaka will be the second line center uh, for right now. And again, does not have the same playmaking capabilities as a Krejci, but uh, put him with Pasternak and Hall. Still not the worst supporting cast, right, to, to put a guy in. So hopefully he can at least do a serviceable job uh, for however long Krejci's out. But obviously, a guy like Krejci, you need him back in the lineup as soon as possible. So you hope it's not anything long term because, we, you you know, you got a taste of what, this top six can do when everyone's healthy, whether it's Marshand or, or crazy driving play on that second line. Um, 
this is a roster that's built to be a, a matchup nightmare against even the best defenses out there. So hopefully Krejci's not out long term. Uh, and then on top of tonight's game and, you know, a 5-1 win, Martians return, Krejci's injury, all that stuff. Uh, Bruins made a trade, right? Uh, I think it was announced early in the third period. Uh, Bruins traded Jack Sidnika to the Vancouver Canucks for a pair of prospects, goaltender Michael DiPietro and defenseman Jonathan Myrenberg. Um, DiPietro is a bit of a, a journeyman goaltender, so I don't really know how exactly he factors into the equation for the Bruins, right? They already have a number of goalies down in uh, Providence, whether it's a veteran like Kincaid, uh, you got Kyle Kaiser, Brandon Busey, all those guys are down there right now. So I don't really put too much talk into where exactly DiPietro fits into the equation. Myrenberg's kind of the main get there um 19 uh was valued as a pretty high prospect for the the canucks in their farm system now that being said vancouver does not really have a stout prospect pipeline so the number four for them is probably a lot further down when compared to maybe some other teams but he's a guy 19 uh regarded as a really smooth skater he's over in sweden now this seems like a trade that has kind of uh PJ Axelson's fingerprints all over it in terms of maybe, you know, his work out there scouting talent out in Europe and Sweden. Um, the whole, you know, plan for a guy like Marenberg, what you hear about him is that he's a really intriguing prospect. Again, uh, good size at 6'3", but is at least four, four, five years away. So he's definitely more of a project, but for a guy that young who's a right shot D, adds value to the, to the organization as a guy you can kind of build around in the years ahead. And obviously for Sidney, it's a tough situation, right? Because uh, he's going to a good spot, which is good for him where he's going to Vancouver that is already uh, injured, um, uh, that is dealing with a whole bunch of injuries. Um, But you also have a situation where um, it just didn't work out here, right? Like it's something where in a perfect situation, a guy like Sidney would slot in right now and, to uh, you know, contribute on the the third line or the fourth line, and set himself up for a spot potentially in the future where he's with a guy like Bergeron and Krejci, just didn't work out. You know, you look at just the depth down the middle this year, especially with Bergeron, Krejci when he's healthy, Zaka, Coyle, um, even younger guys in the system now, like a you know a Merkulov or a Beach or what have you. It just didn't seem like. Um, it just doesn't seem like a situation where it just worked out perfectly for this team. Um, so we'll, we'll see kind of what goes on from there. It's just, again, unfortunate, but when you look at the numbers game, where things uh, worked out, how things fit, the timing just wasn't right. And when Seneca had those opportunities, he just didn't seize them. And you can make the argument that the Bruins didn't give him enough rope. You can look at last year where it seemed like a prime opportunity to give him a spot after a really strong preseason and the Bruins went out and kind of plugged in roster spots by signing guys like Felino and Halla and Nosik. So I think a lot of the blame does fall on the Bruins. But it's a two-way street, right? You need both the young player to, you know, consistently show that production up at the NHL level and the team to kind of reward them. And it seems like both things didn't go right in this situation. So unfortunate there. Uh, Bruins are moving on, getting another young prospect in the system. We'll obviously break down the Sidneka trade as well as all the other news from tonight's game over at Boston Sports Journal. So uh, follow along over there. Thanks, guys.